ultralight backpacks have this very basic rectangular um, pattern and that's how I start it and it was basically this um, everything is a square and I put it on and it, it kind of worked but it wasn't amazing so I decided to change little things change the hip belt so it curves a lot more it's not straight um i put in things like light lifters and so this is my backpack i made this during coronavirus when i was living in an airbnb and i was living out of a suitcase so i ordered some cheap fabric and i ordered some needles and the thread and i hand sewed this um which you can see. <laughs> um, so this is me working out the straps. There is a hip belt, but I just took it out um, to play with the buckles. I can show you is my hip belt buckles. I actually did a test with this. I decided to do a V strap. And I have never actually had a backpack with a V strap. So I decided to test it on my mock pack. Let me show you this pack that I made. I will have a front pocket, side pockets with elastic at the top. It will be a lightweight pack, um, but I will have a hip belt and load shifters. My base weight is around 12 pounds so it's just not lightweight enough for the real ultralight packs but my gear is small enough to fit a slightly smaller size um, I'm hoping this will be about 45 liters so as you can see I played around with these shoulder straps a lot I basically started with a J curve and then figured an S curve would be interesting since I'm a woman, but then I realized that the S curve didn't work at all. And I basically started sewing it back to a J curve. And I will have this hip belt, which is going through a sleeve so I can take it out. I figured that was the easiest way to put this together. So I'll put this on real quick and show you what it actually looks like. So this is a pack. And I actually really love these V-strap buckles. They work very well, they're very comfortable. This is what it's going to look like. When I was constructing it, it actually seems like the best way to attach the shoulder straps was actually quite far down the back. Um, I don't know why, but the way I designed it, it just made it the most comfortable. And then obviously I'll have the load shift as well, which I'll be able to use to pull the pack closer to my back. And I think it works very well, so I'm excited to turn it into something real. This is my workplace at the moment. This is my book 
in which I started to draw things and write down everything I needed. These are my buckles. I decided to put them all together. Sternum strap, shoulder strap, load shifters. Um, I'm not a fan of these 50 mil babies. I don't like them. And I've actually ordered a couple more 20 mil ones. Um, I have some extra. As time goes by, my design kind of changes. So my need for buckles changes as well. So these two 50 mil ladder locks will be exchanged for 20 mil ladder locks. So I'm looking at the main panels right now. This is the front panel with the pocket. It's an elasticated pocket. The side panel, the back panel, this is where the shoulder strap will be attached. And this is the bottom panel. And I have the hip belt sleeve here. Currently, I am cutting, we're drawing the patterns for the hip belt and the shoulder straps out of my Dyneema grid stop. I have the patterns here. This is my shoulder strap, my hip belt. I have this 3D spacer mesh and I'm going to use on the inside. And I have Eversolt EV50 4mm foam for the insides. Basically, I'm going to put two layers of these with one layer of space and mesh. And then the Dyneema grid stop on the outside for both the straps and the hip belt. I'm going to start cutting this. first shoulder strap. So I'm just unwrapping the fabric for the main body which is the X-Pack BX21. I haven't actually looked at this yet. So different from what I expected it to be. It's actually a really nice material. It's quite soft. We're going to take these patterns and turn it into a backpack. So this will be exciting. A little bit worrying. It will be good. It will be good. We can do this. All of the VX21, put them all together. I'm going to try and tack the side pocket onto the side panels. So the side pocket goes here, obviously, pocket is a lot bigger, and there will be an elastic band at the top which I have this side pockets they are tricky to make a pattern for 
I'm kind of fudging it, so we'll see what happens. Well, it seems like this is the moment where it's all going to happen. Um, I have all of these patterns cut out of the fabric. And the first piece I'm going to sew is this little side pocket, the elasticated top, which is actually not the easiest thing to do, so we'll see. Um, very excited about having my sewing machine again, which was in storage for many years. It is this little one. I got this about 18 years ago and it still works perfectly except for that return button. It stopped working a few years ago, so I'm hoping that's not going to cause too much trouble. Um, other than that, um, I managed to put in this thread. The spool is way too big for the sewing machine. It actually doesn't fit. I'm using the Gutterman Terra 60 thread. And I have some new needles. I've got this little pack. So... I should be all set to start this process. That's a zigzag I'm going with. Um, pretty terrifying. Keep hitting the wrong buttons as well. I don't really see this anymore. Okay, so I'm redoing my side pockets. I originally wanted to do this elasticated top, but it doesn't sit flat against the side panel enough. It bulges out too much um, when I do this, and I don't like that, even though I'll have a water bottle in there all the time. I want it to sit flat when I'm not using it, so instead I'm taking this one apart and I have done this, so I just stitched a little panel on top of it through which I'm going to draw this pull string and that should bunch up enough. So I'll sink that shut and that will be able to sit flat against the side panel. So here we go. Change this already. I'm very excited to get started again. I'm a little bit nervous about making mistakes, so I'm going to go very slow. Let me show you a couple of things. So we have a small update on buckles. I got these. 20 mil ladder locks, which I use at the bottom of my shoulder straps. I also ordered some extra um, webbing from this company in the UK, and I absolutely hate it. I got some extra 20 and 50 mil webbing, but I thought I was ordering polyamide, but I think it's polypropylene. It's very slippery. It looks horrible. Um, the one I got originally is so much nicer. As you can see, the only downside is that the 50 mil I got isn't actually 50 mil, it's about 30 mil, which I'm not so happy about. But that's okay, we'll make it work. Also, that makes these two ladder locks the most expensive ladder locks in the world. I paid five pounds for two ladder locks and some webbing and postage. So since I'm only going to be using these two, do 50 each, it better be good. So my other update is 
these side panels. I don't know whether I actually showed you originally when I finished these, um, but I went from wanting to do this Dyneema grid stop with an elasticated top to ripping that out and actually just creating a top funnel through which I threaded actually two lengths of this very thin elastic cord. I think it's one and a half, maybe two mil. I couldn't find any three mil or two and a half, so it, it went quite thin. Um, but I actually really like the way these turn out now. I, I wanted it so that it's set flat if there's no water bottles inside. I wanted to sit flat against the side panel. I don't want the side pockets to stick out. I also created a little opening on the side um, for drainage. So. This is my hip belt. Cut out all of the different pieces. You can see that it's a lot more curved than hip belts usually are. They're just straight. So this is going to rest on my hips very nicely. Um, yeah, foam, Dyneema grid stop, 3D space and mesh for the inside. This is my hip belt, as far as I put the front bits together. It looks a bit like a cut and paste job, but um, I quite, I, I like it. The idea here is that the hip belt pockets actually don't stick out. So this is just um, like a elasticated fabric with elasticated top. I don't need to put much in here. When I have my very first backpack, the Asprey Aura 50, it was very big and I would always have my, um, my arms leaning on my hip belt. And while that pack felt very stable at the time, I now realize that I like to feel free. So I have my pockets at the top where I have my phone, chapstick, um, sunscreen, things that I need all the time. Um, I keep my tripods in there. And then I will have these for just snacks. I actually really liked it when I was carrying my Mountain Laura Design Profit. I had one hip belt pocket and I used it to carry this little camera that I have. Other than that, I don't need to put much in there. So my new idea is that I actually don't really want to have hip belt pockets. So I'm keeping them very sleek. I can put snacks in there. And I want to try and actually hike with a fanny pack. Um, I hate saying that word I'm from the UK. We can't say fanny pack. Um, I forgot <laughs> what we call it down here. Um, and the reason for that is that it will allow me to actually transfer lots of weight from my backpack to the front. I am planning to put all of my electronics in there and that will really lighten up the pack. So I was reading about this thing to stop the ends of these traps from fraying. And it works. Okay, we are progressing. I attach these buckles and the webbing for the hip belt. It's not the prettiest job. Don't really have the right sewing machine capabilities for these, but I kind of tacked on two sides and it's on straight line sewing. So I'm making some progress on the hip belt. This is it inside out. I have two sides. 
and I've decided to keep this bit in the middle open to turn it inside out again. However, I have absolutely no idea how this is going to allow me to put two layers of foam in here. I think this is going to be a disaster. So it's called Disaster. I have to redo these. Basically, I managed to get the foam inside, kind of. And even though I did allow for the thickness of this foam, so the fabric is wider than this insert, it takes up so much space that suddenly, like it still doesn't fit. And lengthwise, it's as though it's about two inches shorter at least. So I'm going to have to cut out the middle bit, make it longer. I hope it's long enough. And I have pretty much run out of dynamic grid stock. So I have to use X pack, which is, you know, heavier and it's really not necessary for this bit. But there's no other choice. So I have to unpick everything and redo it. So happy days. I think this is going to be a weekend of getting everything wrong. <laughs> so I took the easy way out. I took these two halves. <laughs> I cut it up. And now this is going to be replaced with this, which is a lot bigger. Hopefully not too big or too small, because who knows, apparently this is a living being. And, you know, this episode is called Disaster. We'll find out. New hip belt. And let's try this. Let's hope it's not too big. So, it will have foam inside of it. That will make it smaller, which is good. Progress. have one hip belt. It was a disaster. Let me show you. So we have our buckles, a pocket, we have the middle section which goes through the sleeve uh, which is attached to the back panel of the backpack. Um, this is where I pushed the foam through and I actually couldn't, I couldn't machine sew this because it was too thick. So I had to hand sew it shut. These buckles are quite comfortable, although the angle isn't correct. So I'm going to have to undo them and reattach them. This disaster down here is all of the foam that I've wasted. I did three sets of foam. I did this three times and it's here, it's kind of here, it's almost there. I'm kind of happy with it, it looks a bit... It looks a bit messy, but... I just redid some of that to make it more symmetrical. 
so we've got four tacks now and I actually managed to sew a little bit through this seam as well so hopefully it's all safe one other thing that I was staring at a lot during the week was the shoulder straps um, I really thought I had it but I didn't and it's good that I checked it so these are my shoulder straps this one is just thinner because it's the pattern for the foam and this is the pattern for the fabric um, but it's it's the same shoulder strap so my plan was to have load lifters attached here with a little loop I was going to have well my sternum strap down here and my the top of my pocket which is going to be another elasticated um, fabric to almost the bottom and then have the ladder lock down here and I tried on my pack again and realized that this isn't realistic my sternum is going to be lower than the top of my pocket which means that I can't sew the pocket into the sides of the strap and I started to rework it so I started to put um, this is the webbing for the sternum strap attachment so I'll have the top of my pocket here this is where my sternum strap will probably be attached in the middle but I'll have a bit of leeway with that and I'm trying to figure out, I'm running low on this Dyneema grid stock fabric, so I'm trying to figure out how to do a pocket that's half attached to the shoulder strap and half not. So basically this bit will have a back, a backing, and this will be attached to the shoulder strap. So let's see if I can actually make this work. I'm trying to figure out all of the little webbing bits that I need to put on here and I can't really decide what I want to do so I'm just going to have to go with something and go for it. I think I spent about 13 or 14 hours sewing yesterday pretty much without a break and I didn't do that much <laughs> but I finished a couple of well I finished one big project kind of um I don't know how much I showed you in the end but obviously I have my hip belt my hip belt is pretty much finished now it has a lot of different fabric on it, which I don't really like, it's a bit messy. But it's got my pockets. And the one thing I need to do is I actually need to unpick these straps and redo them because they haven't been attached at the right angle. So that's annoying, but at least it's, it's there and it's, other than that, it's done. That took me eight hours and I had already sewn together most of the fabrics last week so basically that probably you know I knew it took me two days to just put that hip belt together which is insane I don't know how people put it pack together in five hours but I guess mine is a little bit more complicated um, and I'm just trying to be really careful so yesterday evening I started looking at the shoulder straps. So I'm gonna run you through this because I don't really tape anything. Okay, the workshop. So we have the shoulder straps. I have attached all of the webbing. I have, this one has a little loop at the bottom. This is going to be part of the loads uh, lifting system. We have the little pocket, which has an elasticated top. It's like a, like a lycra type of fabric as well. And then we have the sternum strap. 
So I have attached all of this. And it has a little loop with a little hoop as well. So I could attach anything additional. Also on one shoulder, I will have my spot device. So I need to be able to attach something at the top and the bottom. So I was thinking I could use that. It's my sternum strap. I actually had to redo this, unpick this a few times, of course. And then I will have this pocket sitting on top of it up until here, which means that half of this pocket needs to have a back. I need to start, I need to start attaching that. And hopefully I'll be able to figure that out. So this is today. I also cut out the patterns for the extension at the top and basically that took up the rest of my Dyneema gridstock fabric so that's done which is why I'm using the X-Pack for the back of these pockets rather than the gridstock. Lots of unpicking and redoing but I think I kind of have it. This is going to be the pocket. The sternum strap will be accessible still. I have these three tiny bits of webbing which is going to be sewn into the seam. And this will be sewn into the seam which would make this a pocket that's half detached and half not detached. <laughs> a half integrated pocket. Um, yeah, I think I've worked it out. progress and I think it's looking good. Shoulder straps are actually working out. I allowed for enough fabric. I made the foam quite a bit more narrow than I originally had it and there are two layers because I don't need two layers of foam everywhere. So I've got an extra four mil just on the shoulders and then everything else is just, you know, the singular four mil. I broke my sewing machine. I'm actually not working this week, so I figured, hey, that would be an amazing time to finish my pack and then it broke, so I figured, hey, that will be an amazing time for it to be in a shop and for me to not be able to do anything. Today, I was going to bring it to the shop. And it's working again without taking it to the shop. I'm a little bit scared about starting again and especially about doing these thick things because these little tacks that I did are what essentially ruined my machine temporarily. Basically what happened is that I would stitch about three stitches and then and then everything would just get stuck down here below um, and it just wouldn't get unstuck, it just didn't stop until about five days later when I wanted to take into to, into the shop and it worked. Um, but I have most of these thick things that goes that go through two layers of foam and the 3D space of mesh are done. Um, except for these little bits. 
There's actually one layer of foam is in here. The second layer starts about there. But I do need to attach these. So I'm hoping it will be okay. And this is where it might all go wrong again. I basically had to take off the foot to fit it. And I think this is what my sewing machine might not like, but I'm going to have to do it because there's no other way. Um, I feel like I really need an industrial machine by now. Done. I am currently making these little triangles. I did a little drawing down there. Um, I'm not quite sure what shape they should be or what size, so I'm just kind of doing it freehand. This is it. This will be inside the pack, so this will be the bit that sticks out with the webbing. The strap. Straps. This is the start of the back panel, and this hip belt is going to go through the sleeve. And I'll probably start attaching these shoulder straps here, which is probably the most terrifying part of this job because I'm scared that too low, but... So the little straps are attached and they look really cute. I'm very excited. I'm still confused, but I think I'm going to sew this, then sew... this top panel on top of it, like this. And then it would sit nicely in between two bits of fabric. Then I can reinforce this against the back and then put this pretty panel here to hide the stitching. Okay. I think I'm figuring it out. I did two stitches there quickly and I did it wrong. So I'm going to unpick it and I'm going to do it the way that I'm supposed to be doing it. I don't think I need to unpick it, but I still can't figure it out. I know I did something wrong, but I might just go with it. It just means that I might have to add a bit of fabric. Okay, I have something. I kind of have straps attached somewhat. It starts, it's very much work in progress. It seems that I have reached a point where I can actually try on this pack. It's clearly not finished, but I have the insides. I have the back panel basically, and I've been trying it on. And I can't for the life of me decide whether or not it's actually comfortable. It's really confusing. Um, I think the design of the pack, it's made so that the shoulder straps are attached very low, um, which means that when I try it on, and obviously it's not finished, there's no weight in it, it rides up. So. That means that it's not comfortable here. It seems like it needs to have a little more of a curve in it, will be attached differently in the back. Um, it rides up from the hip belt. And I have decided to continue going with it the way I made it, because obviously I have my sample. It seemed to work. Um, you know, things seem to change once you put padding in the hip belt, in the shoulder straps, everything just kind of sits differently. But I think my best gamble right now is to just keep on going with weight in a pack. 
everything is going to be pushed down into the right position and sit the way that my sample sits. Um, and worst case scenario, I will have to unpick everything and start new when it's finished. But hopefully I design it the right way, so. I'm halfway through drawing this little box stitch thing on the back panel and on the inside it looks like this um, but because of the way I've constructed it it does mean that I'm going to have to put a panel on both the inside and the outside to hide the ugly bits which was obviously not really needed but I want it to look good otherwise it will annoy me forever so progress and also let's hope that I will never have to unpick this because that would be an absolute nightmare oh probably be easy to just start over I have two panels covering the stitching from these straps now um, I took the easy way out on the one on the inside at the top I didn't turn this around um, but it looks neat enough and whoa the other side it's not bad my stitching is not that regular but it will do and there you go this is looking quite cool this is the back panel as you can see it's starting to look like a real backpack now this is really cool it's the back panel and I also have my hip belt which will go through the sleeve down here Another day, another day of sewing. I just finished part of this front panel, which has the elasticated um, front pocket. My machine seems to drop a couple of stitches when I do the zigzag around the elasticated trim, um, but there's no use redoing it because it will probably do it again. And I have a couple of folds just to allow for a bit of extra fabric so I can put a bit more in the pockets. I'm now also ready to prepare the last straps that will be attached to the side panel. I actually got myself a lighter and I've got some candles so I can cinch the ends of these straps so they don't unravel. I'm just finishing the straps on the sides, compression straps. Um, I actually wanted to use a little adjustable buckle, but I got the wrong. I didn't get a side release buckle, I just got um, a normal buckle for this. So instead, I'm using a ladder lock. So I had to mark it with chalk on the outside of the pack just to make sure I got it right. And I'll thread this through. And then we are going to look at the Y strap at the top of the pack. I have to be honest, I actually have no idea how this Y strap is going to work. And I'm going to have a look at the front. I know it's going to attach to these points, one here and one there, but I honestly don't know. I need to look at some pictures. Everything seems to be going pretty well. I'm attaching all the straps. I have these um, load shifters at the top here 
I have um, the Y strap prepared to go on. So yeah, it's all coming together. I'm just doing some small things like taking the ends of these straps and I know I cinched them so they don't fray anymore but I'm also turning them around so. This is the extension sleeve in the making. It's the very last of my Dyneema grid stop so I couldn't actually make it any bigger than this. Um, so hopefully it's going to fit all of my gear and food. But um, I'm just putting the seams together. I'm going to fill the seams to make it neat. Obviously this material frays a little bit more than um, the X-Pack does anyways. Filling seams. And that's the seam done. This is the inside of the fabric. And the outside. Another day and I have put all of the pieces that I put together on the table. So we have the back panel, pocket straps, we have the Y strap attached to the top, load lifters, we have the hip belt with the little lycra pockets front panel with an elasticated front pocket. We have the side panels, compression cords and um, very basic Dyneema grid stop pockets and the extension sleeve. And this has just a very simple roll top closure. I added some bits of leftover webbing to the sides. I don't have anything else to close it, but that should do. I should be able to roll it enough. I'm hoping that it's um, long enough, but like I said, I ran out of fabric basically. Um, so I'm going to do it with this. I also do have this last bit of fabric, which is the bottom piece. And everything is attached. Little bits of webbing, loops, um, buckles, everything is here right now. So I am going to just start putting together the pack. These straps are very difficult to deal with. When I'm sewing, they're definitely in the way. But I'm attaching the bottom panel to the back panel. I'm then going to attach the side panels then the front panel, then the extension sleeve. And I'm going to try and fill or semi-fill the seams as well. So we'll see how that goes, how, how difficult it is to get to the tricky points. me unpicking. I basically stitched along this original line but I made the sleeve one centimeter bigger on both sides and I was supposed to stitch along that line but I just put these two together and used the same seam allowance so this is me unpicking it and now there's a lovely little line of holes. <laughs> Whatever. So that's my sleeping bag going wet. Okay, and now we have a stitch that is in the correct place. The happy days. Of course. I'm starting to think that I might have to invest 
in this crazy expensive 3M seam tape that seems to work on X-Pack fabric but I might just risk it, it might be okay I know there's lots of little holes um, I can't unfortunately fell the seam in this direction because of the sleeve I don't want to make it too tight so I fell the seam in this direction so this is bottom panel felting number one I decided to do a very subtle kind of extra seam semi seam fell whatever you might call it um there's two mil seam allowance and i'm just going to cut this short now and leave it as it is i have now attached the back panel to the two side panels and the bottom panel i'm about to start attaching the side panel to the bottom panel so that's going to be the first tricky bit first i need to eat something though because sewing current state of backpack i am sewing all of the pieces together and it's really difficult really difficult to get this fabric to just even sit underneath the sewing machine um, and I also need to fill the seam here or semi fill it really I'm filling it like this um, yeah okay this is taking a while just because it's difficult I just turned the pack inside out to fill that seam and it looks like a real backpack which is insane! I mean, come on, it's all, this is happening, this is, this is a real thing. I have to say, filling this seam pretty much seems like the worst idea ever right now just because I don't know how I'm going to do that in my sewing machine. Just getting the material in there. The hardships of filling seams. This isn't fun. Maybe I should never fill a seam ever again. So I actually managed to fill this seam. I mean, it's not the prettiest, look at that, but it's there. And it goes around. Pack is now almost done. I've sewed all of the pieces together as well as I could. As you can see here, it's a bit dodgy. The pack is pretty much finished. All that's left to do is attach the extension sleeve. This is the last stitch on this project. Um, I'm filling the seam on the extension sleeve and that's it. That will be it. So this is the pack. 
it is almost done. It's not quite there yet. Um, I have put it on and at one point I thought it was going to be too small and now that it's made it's definitely a good size. The straps are still a little bit of a question mark. I have put cushions in here for now, so no proper weight. I, I'm i not quite sure whether they should have a little bit more of a curve in them. It's not uncomfortable. I just don't know whether um, it could look more smooth on my shoulders, but... find out I'm going to do a few small things like turn these straps around and put a little bar tack on them. I want to try and undo these, restitch them. But overall it's here and I'm, I'm really curious to see how this pack is going to perform. I have just spent several hours on picking these straps that were stitched onto the end of the hip belts about a million times. So now I can restitch them, hopefully, in the correct place where they are comfortable. There are so many berries. On this thing, Kent, I think I'm Kent, I have no idea where I am. But I'm trying out my pack and I'm gonna try and run through how it fits and whether it's comfortable. It's nice to be out and it's really fun to be wearing my own pack. And UK is kind of pretty. I wasn't expecting that. I am actually exhausted. <laughs> Okay, so I am out here hiking with my pack for the very first time. It feels really good. It's not filled with loads of weight, but I think it's similar to my base weight um, with a little bit of water, so that's good. The straps are wide and comfortable, they're thick, the hip belt fits really well. These pockets are really good. Um, I just use them for little things. My phone fits in perfectly, so that's good. I can take it out, take it back, put it back in. I have these pockets that are obviously very minimal, which I did on purpose. I was worried about the straps not being angled enough um, because they stick out from the side a little bit, but actually it's really comfortable. There's space for my arms to move. And uh, the pack is also quite slim in the back um, to suit my body. And that's really nice. So there's nothing in the way apart from my water bottles. I obviously stick out a bit, but that's okay. The only thing that's missing right now is hip belt pocket, which I use for my camera. Um, I do need something. I like that I don't have the hip belts in the way. So I just have this very minimal stretch pocket. For snacks. Um, my previous packs I've always been leaning on the hip belt pockets and it really annoys me. I just want the, the freedom of movement even though I do wear a hip belt. So the idea is that I will be wearing a fanny pack which I have to figure out how that's going to sit with the hip belt if it really works or not. I like the idea of being able to reach 
distribute some of the weight in my backpack to the front. Um, say all of my electronics might go in there. So that will be interesting to find out when I go on a real true extend it as much as it really should be. One thing that was a little bit miscalculated is the height of the light lifters. They really need to be a little bit higher um, to be able to be effective when there's a lot more volume and weight in a pack. Uh, right now it kind of sits as though it's one of those packs that don't have to be built at all. But right now it is very comfortable and I'm surprisingly happy with it. So. more. Um, as you can see we have elastic pockets on both sides, sternum strap, we have load shifters at the top and a Y strap going down the other side. There is a buckle um, for the roll top, I have very minimal elastic pockets on the hip belt with a V strap. And then these pockets are big enough to hold um, a water bottle and something else, something else small. And then I have the front pocket, which is another very minimal elasticated fabric and compression strap on the sides. And I have a couple of these um, little bits of webbing for things like um, ice axes or bits of gear that I might want to hang from. Back. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.